seeing Steve's interview and, you know, it just kind of brings home the kind of uh, uh, experience he's had, you know, uh, dealing with people's reaction. And we definitely, you know, share a bond in, in that. The interview Walton is referring to was the Open Mind story posted a few weeks back in which Steve Pierce said it would be his final interview. Since then, an outpouring of encouragement has come from his supporters, family, and friends. Realizing how vital his story is, Steve has stepped up to confront his new challenges. Coming out and speaking about this again will be good for Steve. You know, it helps with him to be around people who have experienced similar things, who have, who believe in, in the phenomenon, and it's very validating for him. In the years since the incident, one piece of crucial evidence that backs everyone's story is the polygraph test. This test decided the fate of Steve and the four other men that day. The results of that test have pretty much laid dormant. The documents that are posted on the internet have been brought once again to the public's attention by Pierce in hopes of suppressing the skeptics and presenting solid evidence for the events of that night. I don't lie, and I passed the polygraph test. I, we proved that we saw a UFO, you know. But no matter what you come up with, they're not going to believe you. The people who believe are going to believe, and the people who don't aren't going to believe. You know, one thing that uh, people tend to overlook uh, is, is the... Uh, polygraph evidence, you know, uh, to have uh, s s uh, this many people passing a polygraph test uh, on a single issue, you know, back at the time was judged, to, uh, the odds against that would have been a million to one in the words of the uh, president of the American Polygraph Association. That day, the polygraph examiner asked four simple questions. Number one, did you cause Travis Walton serious physical injury last Wednesday afternoon? Number two, do you know if Travis Walton was physically injured by some other member of your work crew last Wednesday? Number three, do you know if Travis Walton's body is buried or hidden somewhere in that Turkey Springs area? And number four, did you tell the truth about actually seeing a UFO last Wednesday when Travis Walton disappeared? And they would ask us over and over and over because I think it took like two or three hours sitting in there, you know, and they just... I thought I flunked it because I was so scared. However, Pierce did not flunk the exam. The examiner concluded that, quote, these polygraph examinations prove that these five men did see some object that they believed to be a UFO and that Travis Walton was not injured or murdered by any of these men on Wednesday, November 5th, 1975. Having been subjected to multiple polygraph exams, Travis Walton is no stranger to the process. In the years since the incident, he has developed a strong philosophy surrounding the event and the lifetime of effects. Having gone through this thing and try, uh, trying to adjust to it, of course, you know, it was a, a deep, emotionally troubling uh, process, but it was uh, forcing a, a kind of maturity on me. It forced me to develop a lot of a, a more complete philosophy, a more uh, broader outlook that I probably wouldn't have come to until I'd lived a lot more years. You know, I really believe this really happened. There's nothing anybody ever convinced me this didn't happen. Since the Open Minds interview, Travis and Steve have begun to repair their friendship. In our last interview, Steve expressed his fears of sleeping alone in the woods. Recently, with the help of Travis, Steve has worked through those fears. The two will be teaming up this summer as well, and will be speaking at the 2012 Roswell UFO Festival. The trials these men have gone through are daunting, yet they press on, adhering to their stories through the crowd of skeptics. And it makes you feel good that the people there believe you, you know, because all my life people haven't believed me.